Peace be upon you, brothers and sisters. This is Saeed Mirza from ReasonReason.com. And in today's video, I wanted to look at uh, a specific sickness uh, that uh, I see in uh, the materialistic society that we are living in. And that has to do with the acquisition of wealth. Now, the individuals who have a lot of wealth in our society uh, the Elon Musk's and the Bill Gates and the Warren Buffett's, they are looked, uh, they, are, they, are, they have a celebrity status. People look at them and wish that they had that sort of wealth and that wealth and that prestige. Now, as believers, uh, we know that uh, these men who have acquired this wealth, um, not by honest means, but they have used all sorts of uh, cunning methods to acquire this wealth and this tremendous fortune that these men are uh, are piling up the fire in their bellies because uh, on the day of judgment these hordes of silver and gold will be uh, hung around their necks and they will be branded uh, on their sides and on their foreheads with this molten metal and it will be said taste what you acquired this is in the Quran so it's not a good thing to be acquiring wealth. Obviously, I understand people have to survive. They need money uh, for day-to-day -day, uh, stuff to eat and to pay rent. I understand that. Uh, but to make acquiring of wealth uh, and money a focus of your uh, life, uh, that is a very uh, foolish um, path to be on. Now, the first one I wanted to look at was uh, the passage is in chapter 34, verse 34. And um, let's just start with this. And we send not to a city any warner, save its often once said, we are deniers of that wherewith you have been sent. And they said, we are greater in wealth and children, and we are not to be punished. So this is a sort of a common theme that the opium ones in the city, uh, in every society, they uh, acquire resources, they have wealth and children. And because they have these resources, uh, they have these, uh, these uh, things, they think that they are being favored by God. And that's why they don't think they will be punished. They, uh, they actually think they're being rewarded. Say thou, my Lord expands and straightens provision for whom he wills, but most men know not. So it's not that they are doing something right or that they have knowledge or that they have their achievements are, or, you know, uh, they worked hard. It's not that. It's that God is the one who decides the provision and he expands and straightens for whomever he wills. And most men don't know this fact. And neither your wealth nor your children bring you near to us in proximity. Only whoso believes and works righteousness they have the double reward for what they did and they will be in the high places secure. So it's not your wealth or your children that bring you near to God. Uh, it's uh, whoso believes and works righteousness. And uh, when you look in the Quran for this uh, work, working righteousness, these uh, Amal al-Salihat, uh, you will find that uh, it is not just uh, giving to the needy and feeding and charity and that stuff. Obviously that stuff is important and those are works of righteousness but it's also believing in God and the last day and the angels and the books and being patient and steadfast and glorifying God and praising God and uh, acts of devotion these are all parts of working righteousness and uh, again you have to look at the Quran carefully to see uh, you know what those deeds are and what belief is because, you know, a lot of people talk the talk. They say, yeah, we believe in God. We believe in God. But they are also being jealous and being envious of these men of wealth. And uh, we shall see in the passage, which is going to be the sort of the uh, culmination of this talk, uh, the story of Qarun, uh, that uh, the people who, who lusted after his wealth, what they thought about it when all was said and done. Um, but anyway, coming back to uh, the 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 sort of uh, theme that we were on uh, we have here in chapter 49 verse 13 this is the standard this is the quranic standard about what um about those who are favored by god and those who are noblest in the sight of god so it's not the standard of acquiring of wealth 
and prestige that the society places emphasis on. This is not the standard. The standard is fear of God. And this is chapter 49, verse 13. O mankind, we created you from male and female and made you nations and tribes that you might know one another. The most noble of you in the sight of God are those of you most in prudent fear. God is knowing, aware, that God is aware and knowing of the fact uh, of those people that who are in prudent fear. He knows them because again, this is not a matter of you um, dressing up in finery and going to the masjid and um, impressing upon people your piety, your, your, your God-fearing. God already knows all these things. Now, coming back to the uh, the passage that I wanted to look at uh, about Qarun. Now, as you know, Qarun was uh, sort of the head honcho of the tyranny of Pharaoh. And uh, if you read the Quran carefully, you, you, you know that the tyranny of Pharaoh consist, consisted of three uh, heads, if you will, uh, departments. You had uh, Pharaoh, who was the the head honcho he was the leader and uh, then you had the um, haman haman was the religious head he was uh, of the head of the department of religious affairs and his job was to um, mislead men using religion and then you had um, qarun who was the the head of the finance department uh, he was the money man the financier the bankster uh, and it, you see the same thing being mirrored in this day and age where you have the ulemas and the priests who are, you know, obviously at the top you have the Pope and the, the sheikhs and imams and then you have the head honchos which uh, um, are the presidents or if you will, they're, they're more hidden behind them but uh, we can use those as a figurehead and then you have the financiers, the banksters, the, uh, the J.P. Morgan chases um, you know, those, those people who had these financial institutions, the Warren Buffetts, these are the Qaruns of the day, and, you know, Elon Musk. So let's look at this verse here. Uh, this is chapter 28, verse 76. Qarun was of the people of Musa, but he oppressed them. And we had given him such treasures that the keys thereof would have weighed down a group endowed with power. When his people said to him, Exalt thou not, God lust not the exultant. So Qarun was of the people of Moses. Now, if you read this carefully, in no way does it say that Qarun was uh, uh, an atheist or he was a denier of God. And the argument doesn't even revolve around the, the, uh, this fact that, you know, if, they were, if the believers were addressing someone who didn't believe in God, they would start with something like, why don't you believe in God? But here the, the, the argument is not addressed towards belief or disbelief. Uh, and uh, because Qarun was of the Al-Kafirun. And, uh, you, you know, the Al-Kafirun, the idea behind Al-Kafirun is not that they are deniers or believers in God. Uh, the defining characteristic is that they are proud and that they do not submit to God and God's guidance. And this is the reason why Iblis is, uh, was of the Al-Kafirun. Uh, you can't make the case that uh, Iblis did not believe in God. Iblis was talking to God. Uh, but when God commanded him to submit to Adam, he refused and says, O Kanam Al-Kafirun, and he was of the Al-Kafirun. So the Al-Kafirun is a group of men uh, who... Uh, is a is an is a is is a group who don't uh, submit to God, who are proud, who do not believe, who do not uh, follow the guidance. Uh, they they claim to be guided already, and so this is the Al Kafirun, and this is why Qarun was of the Al Kafirun, and this is why it doesn't make a difference whether uh, you know you have a Muslim name and uh, you're the head of uh, you know uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and. Uh, you know, you do the namaz and all that, you are still of the Al-Kafirun because you are proud. Now, coming back to this uh, individual Qarun, he oppressed the people of Musa and the oppression, this is the cunning methods he used was how he was able to accumulate the tremendous fortune he had. Kind of like the people today, the, uh, the Warren Buffetts and the Bill Gates and the Elon Musk, they are not rich because they have played the game fairly if you will, the game is rigged and uh, they are exploiting men 
and oppressing them. And this is how they're able to collect all this wealth and tremendous fortune. And in the case of Qadun, the treasures of the key, the keys, the keys, we're not even talking about the treasures, the keys of the treasuries he had, they were heavy to the point where it would have uh, weighed down a group of men with power. So this is the keys he has. So this is the kind of wealth he has, which is the same as the wealth is today with the billionaires, with the wealth they have. Now, when his people said to him, exalt thou not, God lost not the exultant. So see, this is the proud. This is the proud in his component. He was exalting. He was proud. And his people were the ones warning him, which means that it is the job of the believers to warn the elites and tell them, exalt not. Okay, to continue, this is uh, verse 77. But seek thou in what God has given thee the abode of the hereafter, and forget thou not thy portion in this world. And do thou good, like as God has done good to thee, and seek thou not corruption in the earth. God lust not the workers of corruption. So again, see, the, the implicit uh, um, belief is that uh, seek, they're saying seek what God has given you, and seek, seek the hereafter, as in use this money to do good, to further good works, and uh, seek from it the abode of the hereafter. So the implicit, uh, the implicit argument, uh, the belief is that he already believes in God and the hereafter. That's why they're saying, you know, if if it was an atheist, he'd say, I don't believe in the hereafter. So the people who are addressing him, they they uh, they are saying, you know, you claim to believe in God, you claim to believe in the hereafter. So seek with your wealth the hereafter. And do not work corruption in the earth. God loves not the workers of corruption. So, besides, so all this propaganda that we've been spew, we've, we're spewed out about the intentions, the, the good intentions of these elites. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the Quran, uh, at least in the story of Qadun, we have that the Qadun was of the elites and he was not using that wealth to do good works. He was not trying to save the world or anything. He was of the workers of corruption. He was. Uh, trying to increase his stranglehold on the population and he was trying to um, acquire more resources by exploiting men which is how all these uh, billionaires and trillionaires get their wealth now this is uh, verse 78 he said i have but been given it according to knowledge i have knew he not that god had destroyed before him generations stronger than him in power and greater in accumulation and the evil doers will not be asked about their transgressions. So his response is not that I don't believe in God, I believe in the hereafter. He says that I have, what I have acquired is because of my own uh, cunning methods, my own intelligence and my own knowledge. And uh, the response of God is that if you already have knowledge, knew he not that, knew he not, did he not know if he has not, if he's claiming to be knowledgeable, does he not already know that God has destroyed men before him who are stronger in wealth and power. If he's claiming to be so knowledgeable, he should know this fact that God will destroy him as well. And he says, and the evildoers will not be asked about the transgressions because he thinks that he is favored by God. And, it, you know, uh, whatever he's doing, um, it won't have any ill effects. Uh, and, and it, the more he exploits, the more wealth he gets. So, this is his formula. This is what's working for him. So went he forth before his people in his finery. Those who sought the life of this world said, Would that we had the like of what had been, what has been given to Qarun. He is one of tremendous fortune. So these are the people, um, you know, in this day and age, um, it doesn't make any difference whether you call yourself Muslim or Christian or whatever, or believer in God. If you are impressed by the wealth of these men and you envy them and you lust after this wealth, then you are wronging your soul because the men, the people here, they are also lusting after Qarun's wealth and saying, oh, we had been given what Qarun had been given and he is one of tremendous fortune. Now here, this is the critical part, verse 80. But those who had been given knowledge said, now those who have been given knowledge said, oh, you know, Utu uh, al-ilm in the Quranic parlance, Utu al-ilm means those who have been given knowledge of the Scripture, and they have the uh, the fortification of the Word of God, so they see things clearly. Now these men, uh, in this in our in, in our cases, it's the believers. 
uh, they understand and they see white for white and black for black. So they say, war to you. So they uh, criticize their fellow uh, people, or if you want to say believers, around them who are lusting after the wealth of Qarun. They said, war to you, the reward of God for him who believes and works righteousness is better and none is granted it save the patient. So see, being patient is a component of working righteousness and that those who seek the God, the reward of God uh, by believing and doing works of righteousness, um, they have a better bargain than Arun. Verse 88, then we cause the, uh, verse 81, then we cause the earth to swallow him and his abode and there was not for him any band to help him besides God and he was not of those who saved themselves. And morning found those who had coveted his place but the day before saying, oh, how God expands and straightens the provision for whom he wills of his servants. Had God not been gracious to us, he would have caused it to swallow us. And oh, how those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue are not successful. So now after seeing the outcome and deriving a lesson from this Qarun that God caused the earth to swallow him in his abode, they obviously turned back to God and said that, you know, it's God's grace that he has not taken us to account. He has not seized us like he has seized Qarun. And that it is God who expands and straightens provision for his servants. And uh, he has given us a chance to repent. And oh, and oh, how those who swear in guidance while claiming virtue are not successful. So here you see that those who are the al kafirun they are not successful. So this is the crux of the argument that he was of the al kafirun but he was not successful. That is the abode of the hereafter. We make it for those who seek neither exaltedness nor corruption in the earth. And the final outcome is for those of prudent fear. So those who have fear of God, for them is the final outcome. And it's not for those who seek to exalt themselves above men, who are proud, who are arrogant, and who seek corruption in the land. Uh, it's not for those. The, the final outcome is for those of prudent fear. And uh, all is required is that we be patient and believe and trust in the word of our Lord and do righteous deeds and be steadfast in them and uh, we shall have the final outcome because again it is not your wealth or your children that bring you near to proximity to us to God uh, but whoso believes and works righteousness anyway that's it for now God willing until next time peace and blessings be upon you